This is a review of Legends. I have 11 by 17 sheet currently and I'm in layout view so that's kind of where Legends happened. Um, they're definitely a uh, print item for the most part. They also show up in web maps um, to a certain extent. But you work a legend when you're towards the end just like you would a scale bar and scale text. Um, they're a secondary map item and they can be designed in lots of different ways. And the purpose of a legend is simply to have a correspondence with the map and help us quote read the map. So we want to have our, if we were to think of it as a story that we're telling, we want to have the expressions very clear and concise so that it's easy to quote read the map and read the legend also. What we don't want to have is we don't want to have abbreviations and um, underscores that look like they're coming from a computer that haven't been quote touched by a human. We want to make this as friendly and as uh, layman friendly as possible. So we have to do some design work around legends to have that be be the case. So to get started, 11 by 17 sheet, I have a data frame here, and inside I have Brazil. And I'm going to zoom to layer. So I have everything nice and centered here. And I'm going to create my legend over here in this blank space. Um, and I'm going to have it be relatively large so that we can see it on the video. Currently I have three items. I have two features. Brazil Roads is one of those. Brazil as, as a country. Uh, the outline or the the polygon for the country and then I also have a final layer that's actually a roster and it's a land use roster so if we were to zoom in this is not a shape file this is a vac um, a roster and it's a certain type of roster we'll get into what types we have available um, actually next class so if we open up the attribute table, we can see the values and their counts. So the values at the top, 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, on down, or actually, let me do a sort ascending. So these values, 1, 16, and 13, are very um, predominant throughout the map. And then 22, 8, and 11 are not that prevalent, relatively speaking. And these are different land uses, so one's probably going to be for urban, another one will probably be for open space, probably different vegetation types. Um, it's just a categorization of, of land cover, but it is in roster format. So we symbolize those a little bit differently usually than we do features, and we'll get into that in just a second. To start off with a legend, what I want to do is I want to insert, and I'm going to insert a legend. And the first dialog I have is map layers and legend items. And there's a direct one-to-one -one correspondence here. So I can push everything into map layers and nothing is going to show up on my legends, or I can bring everything over into my legend items, which I'm going to do right now. I can also pick and choose. So I might just want to pick roads and then Brazil and then the land cover. And if I didn't like the order of these, I can push those up and down. I can of course preview it if I want to. Now if I set the number of columns in my legend to one, that means everything's going to um, come into one uh, column. When you have a table of contents and you have a lot of items here, especially something like a, a roster that has land use on it um, with a lot of different um, categories of land use, you probably don't want to have it in one column because it'll be just too long. So in this case, you might want to have two columns. So I just make this two. Let's say next. This is very standard. Um, you can change the legend title around the size, the color, all those kind of things. For our legend frame, for right now, we're just going to have a simple uh, stroke, one point stroke. You can round this so you can make it more um, rounded on the edges. We'll just keep ours a rectangle right now. 
and say next. This um, component, the patch, is referring to the how it's expressed within the legend, the feature. So your areas and your lines, if you wanted to make those real long, you would change that from 38 points to maybe 60 or 50 points. I'm just going to leave them standard right now. This is nice. In 10.2, they've given you a visual description of what's happening in the spacing. So if I wanted to create a little space between the title and then the actual legend items, I can do that. Um, between the different columns. So I'll make a little space between the columns a little bit more than the standard. So I'll make it 15. And then I'll finish it. Okay, and that gives me a legend here. This is not what I want, but at least we have a legend put in. So what I really want is I want to have Brazil and Brazil roads in my legend. So to get to do that, I would have to have make sure that those are clicked on. So when I click those on, then they show up in the legend. So once again, there's a direct one-to-one -one correspondence. This is a really important issue um, in terms of design, making sure that whatever you want to have show up on the map is going to be clicked on in your table of contents and you're showing that over here. Another issue is, is that we don't want to have BRA underscore roads as a title. So I'm going to change that in the legend, I mean in the table of contents. So this is going to, just going to be roads. And it shows up as roads in my legend. For Brazil, I want to capitalize that. And there's Brazil. Okay. Now, currently it looks like Brazil is a land use category, so I'm going to have to do some more dif dif differentiation between um, my two features that are at the top here and my land cover that's my third item in my table of contents. So to do that, I'm going to do a right click and go to Properties. So I'm just working in the legend at this point. And I can start thinking about these items as individual items. So over here under items, this is right after the general tab, under the items, I can go ahead and treat these items separately. So I'm going to click on land use cover and I'm going to place item in a new column. So it's going to be in my second column. Okay, I'm going to apply that. So what that does is it gets everything that's in that land use off to the side away from my other items. And I'm going to click on it again because I don't really like the style of it quite yet. So I'm going to hit style. And here's where I can have make some changes in terms of the style. So maybe I want to have for this heading, I might want to have it sort of a horizontal bar. If I said OK and then apply, we could see that I could have it horizontal. Maybe I might want that. It seems a little bit wide to me. Um, so I'm going to go back. What I really want is just the title and um, the labeling to show up. So I'm going to pick one of these and I can preview it over here in the window. So this is kind of what I want, I think. So I say OK, apply it, and say OK. All right, we're getting pretty close to what I'm looking for. Now I would change the titling um, away from BRA underscore MSK country VRT. I don't need to know all that information. What I really need to know is that this is uh, land use. Very simple and straightforward. Okay, we're getting closer. Um, now I have a problem which is I have all these numbers that don't really mean anything. And you have two options in that situation. If you have data that's coming straight from an attribute table and it hasn't been um, classified in a way that's going to be useful to the map reader, you have two options. You can either open up the attribute table and create a new column and then go in and line by line add in a new value um, for each row. So in this case we would be changing 22 into 
something, maybe forest, one might be urban. So we'd be giving it a name, we'd be qualifying it in some way. So that's one option that we can do. Another option is we can do a right click and go down to properties and under properties in the symbology for the lab layer we have um, a label field and this happens for any feature that you have roster or um, vector that um, that you're that you're symbolizing and it's you have the option to label it so here under the heading I might want to put um, codes or actually how about let's do types and then I actually don't know what one is I'm just going to pretend that it's urban so here I could say urban for one maybe two would be um, sub urban three might be say open space and then we would go down the line and you'd usually be getting this information from what's called metadata so it may be on the website it may actually be um, part of the file that's downloaded if you're downloading it from the web but you'll be getting the type somewhere um, you're not won't be just making those up like I'm doing right now and then we would say apply and OK and as soon as I apply it, it starts to show up as a label within my legend. So we're kind of headed in the right direction here. Now I don't like the fact that land use in types, that the, the font for land use is smaller than types. So I could go back to properties and I could click on what's now called land use and style that alone. And currently I'm in this one. If I go to properties, I can change the heading symbol or the layer name. So I want the heading symbol to be bigger. So I'm going to make that. I could have it be a completely different style if I wanted to. Let's try have that be 24. Or actually, let me make it a little bit bigger. How about 36? And say OK. Apply it. OK. OK. And let's see if what it looks like as a change. Oh, I got the wrong one, so I made types too big. Let me go back. So the heading is not what I wanted to change. Um, so I'm going to make this much smaller. I'll make this 12. And uh, I guess it's the layer name. That should be bigger. I'll make that 24. And say OK, apply it, OK, OK. Yeah, that's headed in the right direction. Okay, so once you're finished, um, you can always go back and through properties um, make more changes. Size and position acts very much like um, scale bars and scale text in terms of, you know, if you wanted to make this smaller or larger. So maybe we want to make ours a little bit smaller now, we'd say maybe 80%. And that's going to make this legend smaller. Um, the frame, we could put a background drop shadow in. For the layout, we've already talked about the layout. And then, of course, we worked on items alone in this column right here. So those are kind of the, some of the ways that you can manipulate a legend. And what's really important going forward is just to make sure that the legend reads as, quote, a layman's legend. So it's nice um, and clean. It's easy to understand. Um, things are separated out well. They're spaced out well. And they don't look like they're coming straight from an attribute table or from, quote, computer speak. That, that so a human's actually touched the titling so that it makes sense for the map reader to understand in a very simple way what's happening in uh, in the map. Oops, sorry about that little notice there at the end. Uh, I think that's pretty good for legends. See you next week.